Okay, I'm gonna show you how to string up the UFO reel and how to use it. Uh, in this case, I'm in the woods, so I need to um, put line on it first. So what you really wanna do is you just wanna secure the line somehow so that it, it can spin with a little bit of pressure on it as you're putting the line on there. Okay, so the first step is you take out some of the line and just wrap a couple times around the spool. I usually do like four, three or four times around the spool. So you just wrap the line around the spool a couple times and then start tying just standard knots. I'm just gonna tie like four knots. Super easy to do. There's one knot. And then I'll I'll tie like about five knots just to make sure that line doesn't come loose. So if you go to the end of your line when you're fighting a fish, at least you won't lose it possibly. Okay, so then I'm gonna cut off the remainder line. Like this just a little give a little tag, no big deal. Now to reel this in, I was gonna stick this spool in my pocket and reel it in so that it would keep pressure on it, but unfortunately this doesn't fit in my front pocket on my shirt. So I'm just gonna stick it in a bag, for example. This is something I would do. And then I'll just put the bag on the floor. I don't know if you can see that. And then it'll, as I reel in, it'll, it'll kind of put some pressure on the line. And when you're putting, I'm, right now I'm using eight pound mono. You just want to use low pound mono. You can use braid too, but just use light, light braid if you do. So oh, the entire goal is to keep pressure on the line as you're reeling it in onto the onto the uh, UFO spool. And uh, you can put quite a bit of line on this thing. But it just depends where you're fishing. You know, if you're fishing a little bitty pond or something, you don't have to put that much line on there. But you can really put quite a bit. You don't want to put way too much because it'll make you get more uh, backlashes. I think it might start to rain soon here, so I better hurry up. Okay, there, so we got a good, am healthy amount of line on there. Now I'm just gonna cut it and to store it, you want to tie it to a, uh, a snap swivel. And uh, you have to use snap swivels with these little bitty reels that I make because they're, I don't know why, it just so you'll get a lot of tangles in your line if you don't use a swivel. So I'll just tie on a swivel, just use whatever knot you like. This is called the improved quench knot, but I don't, I don't know what it's called, honestly. My dad showed me it a long time ago. I still do it. Works really good, never slips. So anyways, um, there you go. And then once you have your, you know, a good amount of line on there, just, you can store, you can store it by just bending the snap swivel open just a tiny bit. And then let me see if I can make you see, let you see this. You just put it through one of the holes, the snap swivel, so it pops out. And you should be good to go, good to fish. <clears throat> okay, so I'll show you what I use with this in fresh water. Um, of course, I keep the reel right here little storage compartment in there. I'll set him over here. So one of my favorite lures to use is uh, these little bitty spinner baits. And this kind in particular has, oh this still has a snap swivel on there, but you can see it has a full hole. 
so it'll kind of hold it in place on that snap swivel better. This is one of my favorite lowers to use, especially here because there's a lot of snags here, so uh, spinner baits don't really get snagged that often. So that's a good lure for here. And then I use, of course, uh, soft plastics. There's a small soft plastic that I found somewhere. <laughs> But I would definitely throw this with the little Texas rig hook. Here's the little zoom, or no, this one's a yum lizard. They all work the same. Let me see. I'll throw a top waters and uh, little crankbaits. Of course, I use bobbers for uh, bait fishing and stuff for catfish or carp or whatever. Here's some more of those spinner baits, one in black and blue again. It's my favorite one to throw. I've got a really big uh, Gasper U out of here on this lure in a couple videos back. And then uh, also one in white. And then, you know, here's what I got in my tackle box. I just have a bunch of different types of hooks. One that I'll mention that's kind of unique. So not a lot of people throw probably these little bitty uh, kind of circle hooks. I use those for carp. I'll just put a little piece of bread on there and just throw it. Nothing but the hook on a snap swivel and a little piece of white bread squished up on this hook and I'll catch carp that way. Got some really big grass carp that way. Yeah, just good little hooks. Uh, of course, your standard Texas rig hook. I really like them with a wider shank like this. It seems to get the set on a large mouth a lot better then for little fish I like to use little jigs like this and my, one of my favorite lures to use but I don't use them here because there's so many snags it's just little rooster tails uh, let's see if I can get this unhooked from itself but just like they're getting hooked to themselves it kind of proves the point uh, they get snagged very easily but it's a really good lure for the for the rod this reel uh ufo reel you can use smaller ones on the survivor series but the bigger ones will just sink to the bottom before you can reel them in but on the ufo it reels them in quick enough to throw any any size spinner bait really just depending on how deep the water is and stuff and then i don't really use the uh, many uh slip weights anymore but i use these little clip weights and this one doesn't have the little levers on the back to open it it's kind of cool it's just a ball that you I just bite it on my line if I need some extra weight. And of course a bunch of little snap swivels to keep those. Um, let's see if there's anything else in here. There's another, my favorite all time go to lure is just a black worm. Texas rigged of course, with a little bit bigger of a hook. And then uh, just a little cheap set of pliers, whatever, whatever you have. You know, just so you can save the fish if it's hooked real deep or something or you can bend your hook straight. That's all I really carry for uh, fishing with the UFO reel. So there it all is. It's kind of my little EDC bag when I go fishing. That's kind of what I carry. But anyways, I'm gonna try to uh, get a shot of fishing. Um, I'm using a stick from my GoPro mount with a little thing I 3D printed that holds the camera to it. I'm going to see if I can get it set up in one of these trees and I can show you how to cast. It's about to rain, so I'm kind of in a rush here. So you just uh, pull out a little bit of line, give it a spin, and then toss it. And then once you toss it, you begin to reel in. And this uh, current is extremely crazy, so I'm not going to catch anything. It's been raining a lot. But again, just uh, pull out a little line. You want to point the front of the reel towards the direction you're casting so the line will peel off and then turn it sideways and reel it in. Uh, if you get if you catch a fish to deploy drag you just uh, put your ring finger or whatever finger is comfortable for you on the spool and then as the fish is pulling it'll put resistance on the on the reel and then you then you can grab back onto the handle and so when the fish is pulling, you take your hand off the handle 
So but put some resistance on it. They can fight the fish. And then uh, put your hand back on the crank and reel it back in. The key is just to always, when you're reeling in, to try to have pressure on the line so that the line isn't sitting on the spool softly. Or I mean, you know, so it'll wrap around it tightly. Otherwise, you can get backlashes when you cast. So whenever you're fishing with this reel, just be uh, mindful as you reel in to always have pressure on the line. Other than that, that's it.